for uh, during the uh, past couple of weeks. It's just been terrific experience here, you know, working with the professor Deep Duck and uh, you know all the colleagues from Dixon College. It's it's an honor to be here. Okay. And uh, let me start out with uh, a little bit of uh, introduction thing here. Wait. Wait, this way. <laughs> so this is a picture I found out uh, from uh, a desktop, uh, my computer. Someone took a, a net view of uh, Shanghai. So that can maybe like explain a little bit about the current China to most of you who haven't been to China or haven't heard of something about going on, what's going on in China. China is like a kind of like a magic country to a lot of people, you know, it's not clear. A lot of people still view it as a, a communist country. It is a communist country, but it also changed a lot during the past 30 years. You have to go here. Uh, this is uh, uh, <laughs> my studio dog Sager. You know, Sager means like a, you know that kind of play, right? And this is uh, the place we came from. You know, those are surrounding areas of uh, about the surrounding Jinzhen area. Does someone come to show me? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm not used to uh, use this Mac computer, just use it. Okay. And uh, just being in Jinnazhen or some uh, surrounding areas in Jinnazhen, you almost cannot like uh, take any bad pictures. I mean, it's like ancient villages, a lot of beautiful flowers and beautiful people, you know. A lot of things I have to say about China and Chinese is, you know, we get really good people there. Of course, we have bad people too, but you know, but people are working hard, you know. And this is uh, a start talking about where I came from. Jinzhen. Jinzhen is a city known for its ceramic producing history. Uh, you know, in, in many years, in many years, <coughs> and. Uh, if I remember this correctly, like in uh, 1004, like in southern years, a uh, southern five years ago, Jinzhen uh, started being pointed out as an imperial kiln uh, producing city in China, which means like it produces stuff for, you know, uh, the inquiry use. You know. But this is the uh, open, the door view, front door view of the ancient kiln museum. And this is, by the way, this is where that gift shop producing stuff, you know, war has. <laughs> and this is the uh, courtyard looking of the uh, building. And a lot of religion things going on uh, now in China, you know, especially after the, you know, 1980s. You know, a lot of people still lost their belief uh, after you know the the Soviet Union switched to you know more like a democracy way, and a lot of people start like a falling in love with all kinds of religions, or even pick up those religions from the past. So this is a view about a monk and a, uh, a prayer going to the uh, temple. In Jinzhen. There are like a thousands, thousands of kiln sites uh, around the area, like both, including both like downtown Jinzhen and the surrounding areas. And like people were talking, the historic book were saying like in back to like Song or Ming dynasties, you don't even have to light up a candle or something, you know, during the night. It's all lit up by the uh, stoke of the kiln fires. So there's like tons of kiln, uh, kiln sites. This is a view a friend of mine. We're going outside to do a little bit like a research, um, pick up the shards from a sewn uh, teapot like kiln sites. Like 
the kiln started producing kiln uh, teapots back to that time. And this is like, a, you know, the uh, general market view of the Jindazun. Like if you think about ceramics, if you go there, like, uh, there's nothing in your mind that could have been produced in terms of ceramics over there. This is a, a view about two uh, uh, local craftsmen and they uh, were working in their studio <coughs> factories of producing, you know, handmade uh, tiles, ceramic tiles. <coughs> you know, you can, they can easily produce in like a, lot, a wall size tile by like a, by a person by like a 30 or um, 40 minutes, you know, just a hand rolling those things. It's, uh, yeah, it's a great appreciation to being there, you know, to watching all those kind of like a traditional, you know, uh, techno techniques. And this is uh, a traditional kiln out in there we call it zhen kiln or eggshell kiln. You know, it's a really thing, like a one brick thing, and, you know, it's like a huge, you know, a lot of uh, stuff and can be fired in there. Normally, people fire it, put, put that stuff in the sagar, as you said, the stacks uh, of sagar, you know, right, right in. This is the ceramic institute. My school owns a, a, another place, like a duplication of Ming Dynasty styles, uh, wood fire kiln, and the courtyard. A lot of ceramics, a lot of uh, dragon kilns and stuff going on in that region, and also people working on. Um, you know, wheel storing and uh, a lot of people actually working on large scale uh, pots throwing. They like to actually working with, like doing teamwork. Like two, three people working together, hand to hand, to, hand by hand, you know, shoulder by shoulder, and then throw a beautiful, uh, large uh, size pot. But they don't even have, have to look at each other. They're like, you know, do everything properly, naturally. This is uh, the people, uh, local master, showing how to throw a bull on a, on a traditional head power wheel. Another, another uh, local potter from Tianbao, which is uh, which like 45 minutes uh, North to Jindazhen, he owns a big, like dragon kiln, which is like a, a 64 meters long along the hill. I don't know how many feet here, but it's like a pretty, pretty big. And he's showing us how to do coil build, like a, a big amount of clay, not like a small. We're talking about like small, like uh, coil stuff. This are like a brand of pretty big. And this is uh, another, uh, okay, let's just start out with, let's do a long time, long story short, okay, like these are all like the backgrounds I've talked about, the Jinnita and the, uh, the place I come from, and ceramic uh, making history. This is a, a young, uh, an old gentleman who's making ash glaze out of the local limestones and the ferns, okay, and if you talk about pollution, like people like, uh, you know, life, Die by smoking sun or something, you know, like this is amazing. I know him and his father, his father died at like 94 years old. And, you know, been his lifetime just doing this kind of thing, you know, working, never wear a mask, smoke cigarettes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's like a four, almost 40 or something, like he's it's, doing it's the same thing, it's very healthy. <laughs> People, every time we took our American students in there, they got like a boom. Wow, that's amazing. Life's amazing. And a lot of large uh, vase and all kind of stuff in producing over there. And um, like in China, a lot of tradition. Actually, they have kind of, we have that kind of tradition over there. Like a, from north to south, even in the farmers, like a, or the malls, in front of interest. People like to buy a pair of like a, you know, big vase made in China and put it in front of the doors to, you know. <coughs> now, this is a school I came from, in view. 
now we start talking about a little bit about my works, okay? And uh, I started out with uh, learn study a lot of like functional ceramics, wheel throwing, you know, uh, this kind of thing. But level one was a pot I threw uh, many years ago and did wood fire. And uh, the right hand one was uh, a sculpture I made uh, when I was a student back in that time. So we do a lot of like modeling, you know, a lot of like picture sculptures. You know, as you said, there's a couple more. There's more. And uh, after a while, when I got to grad, grad school and I met a really um, famous uh, ceramic sculptor in China, his name is Yao Yunkang. And uh, he's a, this man is a great, you know, he, he, he just got great personality, always smelling and you know, have a couple, you know, young girlfriends, even <laughs> you know, he, uh, just like a typical, like, as I said, like a Picasso kind of uh, person, a great artist, you know, and then he, uh, you know, he, he, he really got me into, you know, ceramics, actually. Before I was dreaming, like, one day I could be, like, a painter or, like, a pure sculptor, you know, do a lot of, like, in, you know, bronze costume and stuff like that. But he told me, you know, maybe you should, you know, you should try this thing, you know. I've been working with him at his studio for a couple of years. I really learned a lot from him. So that kind of like changed my, uh, my life, actually, my art life, that's for sure. And I've been doing some like, uh, you know, try different kind of way like you guys do here in Western ceramic where people do like soda firing or wood firing. But I mean, China do a lot of wood firing, but like it, it was like a, one or two thousand years ago. So people do a lot of stone and wood fire. And now people more like a person because the tradition, uh, traditional respect of the, you know, like a jade like stuff, jade like stuff were pure, you know, kind of things. So I've been doing a lot of this kind of, uh, you know, sculpture, clay sculptures, and just still like in the study process. And I also try to do some like a costume things, like American tuku boxes and stuff like that, <laughs> some local decals. Even try to, you know, try to do something with some uh, crop with some you know, the background where I came from, you know, a lot of like underglaze paintings, traditional landscape paintings, uh, along with a <coughs> geometric forms, stuff like that. You know, try to do some paintings and overglaze, underglaze, and some all working on different kind of forms. <coughs> and then, after a while, after I really seriously making my, try to make, make my work and start my art career, you know, like I, that day I decided really I should like be an artist and decide anything else. You know, I did a lot of uh, studies about the all kinds of materials and art history stuff and also spent a year in West Virginia just to study like uh, our history stuff, Western contemporary and you know, uh, Renaissance. Of course I studied this before, but this year provided me a very important, you know, like acknowledged kind of stuff. And this is uh, uh, talking about like a contemporary art or modern art in China. Um, I think we have to start off with the, like, a, like a, the art waves, art movements, in the early 1980s and it happens in Beijing. A lot of the artists, the younger artists that gather together from all the work places, uh, you know, after they graduate from art schools, that like, um, has nothing in their pocket, you know, heading to Beijing and just drawing paintings. That was after a few years after the China star really opened up in the early 1980s. Like I've been talking about opening up, like it totally opened up to the Western world. Before that, I don't think a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of people as 
you know, people still like that. I mean, people have to kind of start typing things about China. But I understand it. But before that, it's kind of like a, a you know, Aaron Corden period. You know, like people don't know what's going on over there. So a lot of people think it's st still in revolution. Of course, it's a revolution. We're talking about China. There's two words you have to think about, or it has to be mentioned. One revolution, another one reform. So this are like a show a, a video of uh, a those artists who gather together in local villages uh, uh, next to Yuanming Yuan, Yuan Garden and uh, some other villages around uh, Beijing area. So a lot of people start like doing a lot of uh, very interesting works, but after like a ten or uh, twenty years later, so it's got a little changed. Like people more think about making works, not just think about to be like a national, like a, some work to represent China, this nation. Also, they've been thinking about a lot of things about connecting between the Chinese art and the Western art. And nowadays, I think it, a lot of people actually uh, holding similar opinions with me, like we're more possible to see modern Chinese art or contemporary Chinese art is more <coughs> as in like playing the same roles, playing the same levels with the Western uh, art world. So this is an artist who um, you know drawing the <coughs> painting based on uh, Goya's like, painting, you know. But it's all kind of like a, has like a nineteen eighty people that time period, that kind of background, you know, people that kind of like a, Wander around, has no belief, has this kind of, all this kind of like feelings. I don't know, start from my language, a lot of things like that, hard to explain. But, you know, these are like some works, this artist the Also, you've been hearing a lot of like the stories about artists that became, one night became two millionaires, or artists that became two very successful after like in you know, a couple of years of struggle. You know. And this is a good friend of mine in Chao Yang, his, uh, in Chao Yang, his work, uh, he was like a, a poor student. He came from, the reason I talk about him because we were friends and we came from the same place. And uh, he was in the school, in art school for four years and then after that he did nothing to do, he wandered around and uh, you know, do all kinds of uh, works for people. Uh, but still, he never saw the thing. He said he still remember he went to like uh, the gallery exhibition and carry all his paintings, make a bruise, walk around, walk it back with a big ring, and no people buy a thing. And he, no people bought a thing. You know, he came back, looked for like anything. But it's all because I'm look at the colors. You know, look at the the colors people wear, or the you know flags. All that's like a red color was that kind of like a typical color at that time. Actually on the bottom was saying people from all around the world, you know, big down American capitalists, you know, kind of <laughs> like people were nuts. But today is China, it's a little different. We're talking about comments, we're talking about, you know, democracy, but still for uh, during the past like I said, like thirty years the comments really changed a lot too, not like yesterday's comments anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, the country changed a lot. Right now, because the economy really been, you know, are doing pretty good over there, and uh, everybody working hard, you know, uh, not struggling with uh, make a poor living anymore, you know, for the most of the situation, you know. Uh, of, of course, anywhere has poor, you know. But, in China, it's a great controversy about like the 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 rich part and the back uh, the the back part, the poor part, really uh, attracts me. Or you see the modern part and the old part really draws uh, a lot of my uh, attention. This is all, in fact, my um, art. Also, we're talking about religion, talking about the. Um, you know, those bleeding kind of like uh, things that uh, disturb of the 
what do you call it, you know, environment or some kind of thing, really, or violence, violence really attract my attention too. You know, you see people just kind of bleeding pictures. So, well, I, uh, this is my niece. I, I really uh, 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 feel uh, interesting with uh, making our works which uh, associate to my view or what the environment really brought to people, you know, especially the kids, especially the children. You know, I remember, like, everybody here could probably share the same opinion with me. Like, when you were little, you know, you, you always curious with what's going on about outside work, outside work, you know. Even you don't remember much when you grew up, but it's easy to observe at that time, you know. So, I'm trying to work on some kind of thing, you know, uh, you know, shows how the environmental, like both politically and, uh, you know, like commercially or whatever, in fact, the people's life, especially the younger ones. So here you see a lot of like um, you know innocent faces. You know people are growing up healthily, but after all this kind of bad things going on, you know when I say bad things, <coughs> sum it up to sum it up the bad things. Here, probably to me, it means a lot about like the bad influences from the politics, bad influences from like uh, you know people's dark sides, you know, like the porn graphics and stuff, all kind of things as far as you can imagine. So it's like a breath. If um, I always feel embarrassment if I smoke a cigarette somewhere around me, I don't care if it's like uh, people, my my friends or some people from my family, but. I really care about like uh, you guys. So some people around me, American people. Jesus, this guy's a smoking a cigarette again. You know, I feel bad because we were talking about secondhand smoking and stuff. Although secondhand smoke is not a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, here, I really when I started, I started making a lot of like uh, you know clay sculptures. You know, start out with the small ones and then enlarge and make a lot of big ones. You know, talking about, uh, uh, the beginning part I was like really concerned about the religion, how religion does to the people, you know, to, to the younger ones. So, and then I started to make some like a, a shiny, glazed, uh, giant babies. <laughs> For, for, for a year, year and a half, you know, it's all about the, you know, the, the, the religion, the kids, how it does to the kids and stuff like that. I have like kind of my uh, philosophy, you know, if you have like uh, some uh, questions, you can, you can brought out afterwards, you know, we'll leave some time for you. You know, how the kids gets to, you know, gets to violent after they learn from the movies, horrible movies. Great entertainment, by the way. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I've been uh, accepted some uh, major shows, and I start, you know, people in ceramic war in China start like knowing this guy making those giant babies. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'm still back to working on that, you know, like it just uh, once I get different, different feelings about the world, I started to get back to work on some kind of thing. It's kind of like a cool sometimes. <coughs> when I was at a studio, this is a view of my studio in year 2005. I, I really made a lot. I can make like a, at least a hundred of this kind of like a big ones. And then I have a, like a working crew, like a uh, working with me to help me making the mold, you know, uh, all this kind of like things clean up. But I do make my mold, own mold stuff. Okay? You see on the background of a very last one, the picture not too. <coughs> the uh, 
the paintings or drawings on the wall. So uh, it shows how this idea came from the reform. You know, so I draw a lot of pictures first, and then then make the clay pieces. Those are more views about you know, stuff ready to fire. They're, they're already moved out, pressed mold, already hollowed, ready to go. Also, I made those people, um, very mean people, a lot of mean people. Uh, those here are just like some, some like a samples I'm showing you. In terms of ceramics, it's a great thing about ceramics. You can use all kinds of uh, way to fire it or all kinds of way to glaze it. You know, so sometimes if it's a glaze, it's a uh, different, create a different kind of view or feels. Also, I sometimes I feel like myself are kind of like a a, a, in, a baby insect. You know, uh, living in this is like myself, okay, no people else, myself, put a pork in a knife. And later on, she and I were made in the hat last year. Also, I've been working on a lot of decorative, uh, decorative, you know, uh, ceramic sculptures. Most of them are large, like if you ask about the size, a lot of my stuff are like big size, bigger size. I like the contrast between the form and the traditional paintings. So all kind of insects, insects with uh, the hand painted decorations on the uh, surface. This is like, a, you know, still back to Mao and the uh, communist idea how it affects people's uh, uh, life. This is a uh, working view of me working in the studio. So small guy with uh, like a um, adult jacket, kind of like a like a secret agent, or someone. This is one of my studio view. So revolution again, a lot of the revolution, old process stuff really impacted people's life. People dancing. Um, this common as a soldier to sue a dancing ballet, that's kind of cool. But back to that time for a close China, this part, you know, showing that light part of that lady, that actress, was a sign of the desire of the people, whoever, you know, like a, as the opening wants to open. You know, that part of the leg outside, you know, uncovered. A lot of bad things happen uh, if uh, you really educate your kids in a different way. So this is uh, some uh, fish and words. This one called uh, the passing or recall the passing young times. That's porcelain. It's like uh, this big. You would probably would see this one. This one's still an impact, right? So those are like uh, I've, uh, before it gets fired. It's like this. So it's hollow. It's it can come out from the mold. Sometimes I do hand build too, but this is uh, 
for some kind of like a, a dishing kind of sauce. I mean, this kind of uh, move. Uh, different views. And this is another <coughs> fish ones too, which is uh, a kind of um, lost the fire afterwards. Also, I'm wor I was working on all kinds of, uh, basically it's all clay sculptures, but I really like the idea, you know, trying to describe some people who has uh, big ideas, you know, uh, sometimes like old ideas, but people still like, uh, they don't know they're like uh, standing up on a piece of cloud, or they don't know, you look at the bottom thing, it's like mm -hmm. all like a cloud, crowds, clouds, or, you know, like a air, bubble forms, so unreal situation. So this is how big it is. <coughs> so just different view. Also, um, I always uh, feel interested with uh, building something like uh, associated to my own minds, like even use my own faces and stuff like that. You know, this is like a, a, a me, like a struggling, and I feel like a red red. Jeez, you know, lost something. Like also, some figures, you know, I don't know, I, I, it's hard to describe or explain things. Rather, I'd rather make it work than to just you know, explain to people else. This is kind of like, I feel like it, when you have that kind of like, a, like after you get drunk or some kind of thing, just about, about there. Or like if you drink some or you smoke something, make you feel just good. <laughs> like this is a, a, a figure I made for you know, um, people who don't want to see. A lot of people, they get great resources. Like you were here at Dixon College, they're great libraries, everything. A lot of resources, good artists, and good lecturers are here. Like a lot of people just refuse to see. But I also have some other things behind it, only for myself. Like if people still have that kind of like communist idea. Last year, this is about the last year's Olympic Games. You know. You know, we feel like all the Chinese, how many people in China? Millions, billions of people. We feel like it, full of passion, you know, uh, you know, try to have this great war, like uh, sports festival holding down there in China. But still, like, if we, we start to notice the war really isn't like they're welcome to us. So this is like a, a hardcore, like a typical Chinese, Thomas girl holding up a cord, Olympic cord. It's like an ice cream or something. But you know, hold up, like, you know, just like a, we're, to, we're welcome, you know. But I don't know what's the worst opinion, reaction about the Olympics. That's one of the fish in the world. But those are just like one fire. Also, I created those kind of like a things. This is all like means myself, okay? Like holding the ox or try to kill a giant animal. And means sometimes I want to get rid of something in my life. This is the one I made last year I had, the Harrisburg Area Community College, uh, Turkey Hill. You know, I get nothing. I, I, I don't know what's going on about Turkey Hill. Bob was showing me, we, we drive along somewhere, I said, Turkey Hill, what's Turkey Hill? Turkey is an animal, right? Hill is a small mountain. Turkey Hill, so this is my turkey. <laughs> <laughs> so, I really didn't know anything about the uh, turkey, you know, the, it's a, like a gas station, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, like it's, it's funny. Sometimes you don't know what's going on. And, <laughs> Turkey shield, I think this is myself, I hold a fork and knife, I'm eating your hamburgers. <laughs> Turkey. <laughs> so this is a 
myself I didn't show here. So make up all kinds of small animals. Those are all hollow right for fire. You know, so sometimes I, I I mean it like it means or it uh, indicate to some like people or people's personality. You know, or pigs. So I was gonna. I was. I had this idea of like get all kinds of animal hats put together, put in the big uh, plotters and put on the table. So I try to make it short. And here's um, my visit at Dixon College. And, you know, making stuff with uh, the ceramics or art, uh, art history uh, department. Others uh, sculpture and made their a offset mean. Or the balls are too small. I was gonna like make a I was gonna cast a lot of big like a bread or hamburgers, sandwiched hamburgers or this kind of stuff. That's some story to have this one too. Just like this time I got here I got really sick. I feel like upset all the time. So the doctor told me you can't eat this, you can't eat that, you can't have any sweet stuff, you can't drink a beer, so you're like, what am I going to do? <laughs> 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 this is, uh, uh, yeah. When I saw students or uh, working in a studio making teapots or making, you know, uh, throwing bowls or stuff, this is uh, one of my teapots. You know. Just to give a little bit different references while I'm there. I know a lot of students don't want you to do any like a reaction with me. Like I'm kind of like working there. People come to look at me. Oh, it's there. And then back to work on your own things. But I also really hope I can make something can or whatever I do in there can bring you something. Can share some of my technology with the ceramics. <coughs> And I started make a uh, mold, showing students how to make mold. Uh, only a couple of them there to look at that. Okay. Those are like some other kind of thing I was doing when I, uh, when I was in my studio. You know, just trying to make, make myself comfortable. I also do uh, some uh, drawings and paintings because I was I was <coughs> in love with uh, painting, especially oil painting stuff. This is the one with uh, I painted. It was a pretty big tile, like, a, like a half of the that size, <coughs> pretty big ceramics, ceramic tile. This is another one right before I came here. Guy said, it's on fire. Go <laughs> check it out. <laughs> this is uh, my wife's work, and she was here uh, you know, a couple of weeks before. I was really uh, lucky because she uh, gave me a lot of support, and we've been helping out with each other too. And, you know, it's a sweet lady. This, I think, is some picture of uh, me. I think it's really cool. Any <laughs> 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 questions, please, like, you know, just let me know. 
time in hell. Could you tell us about this? Yes, please. Um, you had mentioned that at a certain point, you know, China began thinking you know, less about national audience, more about international sort of global audience. And I was just interested in how that issue has played out in your own work. Um, who do you see as your audience? Who, you know, who do you want to buy your work? Um, who are you thinking about as your, as your audience, basically? Mm -hmm. See, here, there's, first of all, I give me a place in certain life. Okay, from the, like, the lowest R to the highest R, there's a big gap over there. From like, a, people sell for millions and millions of dollars, or people sell stuff for like a 10 or 20. There's a big gap there. I have my place in there. So I certainly know what kind of like, uh, audience I'm viewing in terms of marketing my artworks. So, but in terms of making like a strength or making like a stuff for education function, this is like a separate, separate story. So I certainly kind of like know what kind of audience I'm facing, but you know, I can tell you we go like outside later on like what's going on there. But here, you know, I just like can tell you only thing I can tell you is I'm in certain things only myself knows in certain level of the from the low and the highest. So and that part of like it, our works of facing that kind of like it, that part of like the audience targeting on this level is my audience. I don't know if that answer that's your question. Do you both, both uh, domestic and international? Uh, mm -hmm. But a lot of people, a lot of uh, Chinese uh, buyer collectors uh, buy my works, and the mentally Westerners. I mean, I sold some works the West occasionally in, in, in some other countries, but a lot of more are Chinese uh, galleries and collectors and museums. Yes. Could you talk about the art scene in Zhengzhen? I think of it as more conservative, traditional ceramics, but what you're doing is a little challenging. Are, is there a movement there of contemporary artists who are pushing the boundaries? Great or are you kind Great of question. different from the rest? Great question. And it, it, you know, like a, just like any kind of like an art movement of uh, political movements, you know, when the modern thing goes, meets the wild war, it has fights. Like, you know, all kinds of like arguments. In Jin and Zhen, that's the same thing. A lot of like a new uh, newborn artists, okay, like my generation, a lot of people are our thirties, thirties, a lot of people you're creating completely different artworks with people else. That's all uh, really up to what you think about your own art. If you think your art is making stuff for a local, like a family will use over there, you make something. If you think your art goes to, you know, some people's, like a, like a book room, reading room, you make something. If you think about something for tiles or stuff, if you think of something for the dollars, it's all different. Like today, there's no difference between any individual thinking. But the local uh, situation is really tons of, that in Jinnazen, there's about I don't know how many people there, tons of people. I used to know, but I kind of forgot. But like half of the population there are related to ceramics, more related to ceramics. So if you get on like a, some kind of like taxi, the taxi driver will, will tell you he used to be a movie maker, he used to be a, like a painter or whatever. So, but it's kind of like a difficult for this uh, small portion of artists to survive in there. But we view it, you know, like a, clearly just a, a material. We're using this to create different kind of artworks related to our like uh, creative thinking. So that's kind of like a, a major difference between those kind of artists and the local artisans. Yes, in, in China, <coughs> there's a prejudice in. in 
Western art making, contemporary art making against ceramics, it seems, you know, mm -hmm. as being part of a craft tradition. Yeah. In China, as a sculptor, do you find that there's a prejudice against the material? Definitely. It's going on all over the world, right? Like, people think it's view ceramics as like a functional, like a craft, like a kind of thing. But I think it's totally different because this is just a material. It depends on how you play with it. If you play with a different way, even like a craft, what's wrong with a craft? This is a great thing. Like, the probably first century, 21st century, it's a great thing for entertainment because of the column is not doing very well. For the art, you know, for artists, that's pretty, you know, like, this is the artist century. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? And the, uh, I, I'm just so wondering about the gallery situation in China, because uh, when I was in China, uh, there, there were very few galleries. It's all government galleries. Uh, what's the situation must be very different. Are there a lot of private art galleries, large ones, small ones? Can you tell us? Okay, I only can share my kind of acknowledge with the part of uh, the situation over there. I know right now in Beijing there are thousands of uh, artists, thousands, thousands of artists, independent artists working there, working in their own studio. So some are guests are successful, can be like a rep, their works can be represented in different colors. Some are like a still working, still poor, still you know still poor. But there are <coughs> tons of galleries just like uh, start like located in, Jin, uh, in, in in Beijing or in China. For the past eight or ten years, there are like a, probably like a 500 more galleries than eight eight years before. Those 500, no, this is just about there, okay? 500. 500 means a lot. This 500. That means, you know, the majority of this, uh, like top galleries in the world, already viewed that part. View already noticed the Chinese contemporary became to you know, part of the world, you know, the art world. So before I was like only a few the government, like a uh, professor, you know, talking about uh, government owned galleries, like a National Art Museum, this kind of things. It was the past. Like a, right now, if people say well, you do a show in the National Museum in China, people say, "What kind of people you are?" So it's kind of different. People really more, more and more young artists, more and more avant-garde and contemporary artists, really, you know, work, like to working with some more like a private, like galleries, especially Western galleries. They pay some more too. Yes, sir. I really like your shiny glazed giant babies. <laughs> the red one. And I, and I don't know why. I find them both uh, disturbing <laughs> and attractive. Like you see a baby and you want to pick up a baby, but maybe not this baby. <laughs> and, and also that you see the baby, but there's no mother, there's no father. And the kind of, you know, I remember having some little children and they are very hungry and they want things. Uh, and you want to give them something, but it's not clear what these babies want. And I wonder, uh, you know, you made some statements about China and its changes, and it, somehow it seems to capture something that I've noticed too about, well, not just maybe China, but the world we live in. There's something there, but, um, so I wonder, I, I mean, if, if, anyway, I think you do a brilliant job with that, but I, I, it, it's hard to understand maybe that's part of it. What they can do. Mm -hmm. Well, I I, I, I I get your question. Thank you. And I think like it, uh, the artist credit our works. It's always like a self related, you know, always related to some people's self experience. And I'm like I'm not a, like a expert on like a, like social movements or this kind of thing. But I have my view to catch up this stuff. I know this. But I don't. Um, I don't think that sometimes the contrast between you know this kind of like a, um, what do you, you see you know that kind of looking 
baby fish is hybridized. It's quite a different than to the general baby fish. Like a lot of the baby fish, everybody wants to give a kiss or hug this kind of baby. Those are quite different. I think there's something like it happens between the, the, the idea and it transforms to a real pieces too. But also, I kind of enjoy this kind of like a uh, transform. Sometimes I like, a, like a, I, I want to, like, I want to create this kind of like differences between the real one and the art one. So, I don't know if that can answer your question. Yeah. Um, I did an art student in China. Um, my question is really, how much of your um, training as an artist is versed in like Chinese, Chinese classical tradition? And how much of it is more or less, you know, innovative and creative moving forward in like the 21st century? Because obviously you showed photos of China as a two-sided coin. You had Shanghai, and then you had, I would assume, to be a, a photo from Jing, Jing mm -hmm. So my question is, then how much, as you, during your training as an artist, how much of it was versed in the Chinese classical? How much of it is versed in more or less like the modern post post era? Yeah. Are you uh, uh a language major? Yeah. Ooh, good memory. Yeah. Um, Thanks. Well, let me think about it. I think this uh, answer, to be able to answer your question, I think um, only the people who really live there, who born there and live there and experience every day what's, you know, what's going on, those kind of people can feel the change and the difference between the past and the, uh, the, the ongoing work. My kind of like a view is like I said, people who create, uh, create uh, what is it, like a creator or some kind of thing. You try to create something, you, you know, you feel about the distance between the past and the, uh, the, the future or current uh, ongoing work. You also capture the things, the, the features you want to capture. Like there's like a, a lot of things to grab on the meal table. I only grab something I need, and I grab something I need from the from the drink part, from the meal part. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's all about self feelings. Art is selfish, self selfish people. You know? mm -hmm. Yes. I wanted to ask you about something you talked about yesterday. When I, I, I um, recounted having talked to a gallerist in New York City on the weekend who was talking about wanting to go maybe to uh, China and to open a gallery there. Mm -hmm. And the conversation that she shared, having had with various people when she was in Beijing about um, China, China's future venue as a as a place for artists to show work from the other end, not where artists are working in China and then showing the work on uh, out. But what happens when galleries from other countries settle there? And her, she was, she mentioned something that I said to you that I never really thought about. But she said that she thought that there was, there might be some ambivalence about outside galleries outside of China considering showing contemporary work there, if there was a sense that censorship might be an issue. And she was saying that there, there's talk, who knows what this means, but it was kind of thought. What, talk about maybe the idea of, the, of, of, of Beijing not necessarily being the art center, of the global art center that starts to compete, let's say, with, with the states, but what happens if India is a more viable place for artists to show work because it's more sort of user friendly. I haven't do it, you know. Like uh, right now, New York is a world art center. Everybody comes here. I come here too. Everybody comes here. I don't do it, you know. It doesn't matter. So where's where's the world art center? And of course, I never think yeah. Beijing wants to be like or ever been the world art center. <coughs> but I think you know that's not even a problem. I don't do it. Whoever has money wants to invest, invest in art, real ideas. If not, it's fine. But I think a lot of galleries are dying, are dying now, both in <laughs> you know, my study, like about the like, galleries in China and then some other countries too. Like, a lot of galleries are kind of like 
suffered was the work of college professors. Mm -hmm. So I have, like, I have heard from a lot of my artists first too. Like uh, once in a while we talk, we talk about look at this Christie's or the auction records, the you know, <coughs> so space. It's all dropping down dramatically. So make no difference. Like, uh, like uh, where they want to invest in their dollars or art. Well, no more questions? Thank you.